Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use CSS to create an arch-shaped image in your Squarespace website. Now, before we get started with this tutorial and the codes are listed below, I do want to mention uh, some people have asked, can't I just create this effect with a PNG image that already has the arch shape to it? Absolutely. That's a great way to go. The reason why I'm creating this tutorial is maybe you don't know how to do that. You might not have Photoshop. You might not know how to create that shaped image inside of Canva. Whatever the situation, if you need to create an arch shaped image for a creative website design and you want to do it with code, this is the tutorial for you. Now the codes I'm using today, once again, are listed below, but they, I also want to mention they're compatible with Squarespace 7 or 7.1. So if you're on an older version of Squarespace, this tutorial is still going to work for you. So what we're going to do is create that arc for the image or the arch shape, if you will. And then we're going to add a creative border to it as well using some custom CSS. So let's hop into my demo site and get started with this one. So here we are in my demo site and I have the code right here. This is for a standard inline image. I am going to show you the codes for all of these other image types. We'll walk through those piece by piece. But let's start with the basics here because I want you to understand what you're going to want to change for your own website. So I'm just going to copy this code right out of the page and I'll select design and then scroll on down to custom CSS. And you'll see I just have this regular image here and that's what we're going to add this to. So I'll paste that code and check it out. We get a unique arch shape and then I've also added this border to it, creating a box shadow. So it also has the curve on the top. So let me show you what parts of this code make what changes. Up here, I've set the border radius to 500 px, 500 px, 0, 0. What the heck does that mean? Border radius codes read top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. They go clockwise starting at the top left. So I've said curve this top left one by 500, then the top right one by 500, and leave those bottom two as perfect squares. Now we can totally switch that up and check it out. Now I have the arc on the bottom creating almost a unique U shape, if you will. Personally, I prefer it on the top. That's the effect I was going for today, but you'll see that's how you can change that. So after that, we've created a, bo a box shadow here that I've offset by 50 px and I've changed the color to orange. Box shadows read horizontal axis, vertical axis, blur radius, and then color. There are many different options for box shadows, but that's just the basics for you that you need to know for this tutorial. You can also use a hex color code here if you'd like. Uh, we can do one of my favorite shades of teal right there, or you can just use the actual word for a color, like if I wanna just say purple and I can spell it correctly, there we go. You can use a web safe color name, HSL, RGB, whatever kind of color you want. But that is where that information goes into your box shadow. So let's say I don't want it to be that thick, I can change it to negative 10 px, and that'll pull it a little bit closer. Or if I don't want a box shadow at all, I can just remove that line, and all I'm going to do is see the shape for that particular arch. Now, after that, I have margin left 50 px. I did that to offset the box shadow here. So if I've got that shadow, but I don't have that margin, check it out, it's gonna run into the other content that's there. So I'd like to scoot it just slightly over inside the brackets. There we go. I like to scoot it just slightly over so that it doesn't really affect or overlay in the other content on that particular page or section of my website, okay? So if you set the box shadow to something thick like negative 50, add that margin to the opposite side, okay? Awesome. Now let's scroll down and take a look at these other image types. You can see none of these are affected by that same code, just these main ones that are inline images. What if you want to apply this to an overlap image? You can totally do that, but it's slightly more complicated. So let's go ahead and copy this code again, listed in the description below. I'll paste it right here and let's check this out. What we've done is the same thing. We've added that border radius, we've added that box shadow, and we've added the margin left, but I had to change a few more things. My overlap images might have a background on top of them for that image overlay, so I added overlay transparent. If I don't do that, you'll see, I might actually see a color showing up there. Depending upon your site styles, you might wanna add that line. So it might not be necessary, it might for your site styles, I threw it in there just to be careful. And then after that, I also changed the margin for the card wrapper. Check out what happens if I remove that. 
the image is going to run right up next to the actual text that I have associated with that overlap image. So if I gave it a little bit of a border there, that's going to separate the card wrapper from the image automatically. Okay, awesome. Let's keep going. We've got another image type here, poster images. I'm going to copy this. This one's pretty simple. I'll paste it right here. Again, we've created that border radius, top left, top right, and then the bottom left and bottom right are set to zero. So they will be 90 degrees there. Then we've added that box shadow and we've given it a margin. And then I've also added the border radius to the image itself inside there. If I don't do that, that image will stay a solid square and that box shadow will just be behind it. So I've had to separate those out specifically for poster images. I know it sounds complicated, but I know you're following. Just use the specific code for poster images listed below if you want to apply that effect. Now let's say you want the shadow to go in the opposite direction too. I just need to mention that. I can set that to negative 50, negative 50, and it'll just scoot it to the other side, okay? So make that positive, negative, adjust that value however you see fit. It works exactly the same as the other box shadows we just went through, okay? Couple more image types to go, stick with me here. If you have a collage image, it's gonna be very similar to poster. We'll paste that right here. Again, we've created the box shadow using negative 50 PX and we changed it to red. We've added that margin there. But one more time here, we had to reset that image overlay. Collage images can also have an overlay color like that. So I set that to transparent just to make sure that my site is going to look this way, okay? All right, one more to go. Let's scroll down the card image type. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this code. There we go and we'll paste it right here. And one last time here, we've got the border radius set, top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left. We've set the box shadow to 50 PX, zero, zero, and I made this one pink. And then we've added that margin left as well. And again, you wanna switch the sides there, maybe make it negative. It'll flip back over, totally up to you. Now after that, we've got that overlay one more time. I went ahead and reset that to transparent. And then, just like we did scrolling back up here for this overlap image, we added one last line that said scoot the content of that card over just a little bit. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial today. All of the codes we just used are listed below. Make sure you're using the correct code for the correct image type, because as you just saw, they're gonna be slightly different depending upon the settings for that specific image type. And I really wanna encourage you to get creative here. Change around the pixels on that particular curve to make it the right shape that you wanna see. Adjust those margins so that they look perfect for your own site. And when it comes to that box shadow, you can change the width of that box shadow and the color using any color code that you'd like. A hex color code, RGB, or just a word like purple or orange, whatever you're comfortable with. Again, code specifically listed below by the image type, so just make sure you're using the right one and you'll be good to go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome with this tutorial today. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. With over 30 pages of pro tips and code snippets specific for Squarespace, you can customize your site way beyond your design menu. Download your copy today at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.